Hi everyone. Today we're discussing uh, a message from John Paget to James Paget on December the 31st of 1914. Hmm. And Jesus is joining me with his reflections hmm. and uh, looking forward to it. So if we just maybe give a little bit of background, John Paget was James Paget's father. Yes, yep. yes. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, so on the 31st of December, which is of 1914, which was the first year that Paget began receiving messages mm. from spirits. Um, his his dad came to him on the 31st and talked to him about what he'd been doing in the spirit world. Mm. So mm. Uh, I don't think we'll read the whole message because it'll be very lengthy. <laughs> but perhaps if they're all good messages, though. they're great it's messages. To read it. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. But perhaps even if we uh, read parts of it as we go and just reflect on... Sure. On Sometimes I feel though there's so much material in each message that it's almost tempting to read every message and discuss it as we read it. Like, sure. Well, why read don't I read the first it? paragraph and mm -hmm. then uh, mm -hmm. we can discuss it. Sure. All right. Okay, it begins. I'm here, your father, and I'm very happy and glad that you seem to be also. <laughs> Here or happy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think happy. Yes. yes, because of your experience the other night in loving Helen and her loving you. You certainly were filled with love and you must be perfectly happy to have had such a demonstration of love and the realisation of the actual sensitive presence of your wife. I tell you that she has with you... Sorry... For I tell you that she was with you and was so filled with her love for you that we all wondered at her love. She is a spirit that seems to have no limit to her love for you. Not many spirits seem to have such an abundance of love as she has for you. So you must consider yourself a very blessed man to, a, to have such a wife and a soulmate. Mm. Uh, I thought that was um, really interesting that he was talking about not just um, Helen's love for James, but the experience that they shared in giving and receiving love mm. to each other. Mm. Yeah. And it was quite ob obvious that, that Helen has already opened herself up to her soulmate. And it's also quite obvious that James is oftentimes shut down towards his soulmate. Yeah. Throughout the messages, that's quite f uh, frequently the case. And, and so in this case, he opened himself up to the experience of having her love enter him and also him giving her some love. And it was quite an emotional experience. If you look at the original message where that demonstrates what happened here, it was quite an emotional message and both of them were crying at different times during the message. And, and this love that they exchanged then could freely flow between each of them. And it's another indication of how emotion um, and there's all these indications through the budget messages about how emotion of it is very important to the experience of love. Yeah, mm. yeah. Sometimes <laughs> Helen in the other messages makes me giggle because she's quite firm with him. Like, you, you just need to let me love you. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his blocked yeah. feelings towards her prevents her love from flowing into him and so forth. Yeah. And, and so she then feels like, now I'm being blocked from loving you. It's like, yeah. Um, in this case, with the event a few days earlier, um, she was very much more expressive and he was much more expressive. He was missing her and so forth and he connected to some of his grief which opened him up to mm -hmm. the feelings of receiving her love. And this is, a, I feel, a great illustration of how different emotions inside the person blocks a person from receiving love. Yeah. Yeah. And I certainly re relate to it from a personal um, perspective. Mm. Uh, you, you know, you, you can relate to Helen's feeling that often there's this huge desire in you just to love me and you feel this block in me. Mm. That is very much related to my grief that I won't feel because when I do open up, it's often I, it's very emotional for me. Yeah. And um, I have to admit in the beginning reading the messages, I had a lot of resistance to Helen because she's so uh, adoring mm. of, of him. And I think that's what it was triggering for me, this feeling mm. of uh, a resistance to love because of the grief at the loss of love, which is really what James, that's why he's home on New Year's Eve on his own, isn't it? Because he's yeah. lonely and yeah. he's lost his wife 
Yeah, yeah. and yeah. he was quite alone that entire Christmas and New Year's period. And anybody yeah. who's ever spent a Christmas and New Year's alone knows that it can feel like a very alone time yeah. because everyone else is seemingly busy with their lives and you just feel like nobody really has taken any interest or knows of how you feel. Yeah. And this is something that he felt at the time. Yeah. And the experience of love that he shared though with her was also created through this acknowledgement of his own loneliness and his own grief and so forth as well. So I feel it's very important for people to reflect upon that when they read the messages that love flows when there's no other emotional blockages to its flow. And this is a very important, I feel, thing to be aware of in the messages. It comes out in the messages all the time. Yeah, and, and let's proceed with the message because it actually comes out hmm. further. Do you I want me to read the next paragraph? Yeah, go for it. Yes, as I told you many years ago, there is a record of the heaven in the heavens. I'll start that again, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, as I told you many years ago, there is of record in the heavens a book of lives, as I might call it, which contains the names of those who are decreed by God to be one through all eternity. And when I want to know who is the soulmate of one who desires to know his or her soulmate, I consult that book, and there I find who the soulmate is. I am not permitted to give the name of the soulmate if he or she is on the earth life, for it might create discord or unhappiness to the living. But if the soulmate is not married, then there is no restriction upon me. But if the soulmate is married, then I must not tell the name, such is the law of God in this particular. Mm. So this is interesting, this paragraph for me. Mm -hmm. um, it touches on the ethics of... Disclosure of soulmate relationships. Yeah. Mm. And also um, talks about what... John, James's dad, is doing in the spirit world. Mm. And he doesn't quite enjoy the job as much as Helen enjoys it. <laughs> Which is interesting, isn't it? Perhaps yeah. uh, his emotions of a resistance to love. Uh, well, at, well, at this point in time too, John Paget himself is fairly blocked to his own soulmate. And so, you know, of course, um, he, he knows about soulmates, but he's fairly blocked emotionally to his, also, uh, his own soulmate. So that, and that comes across quite strongly as well in the messages. And so while he does the work, he doesn't have the enjoyment of the work like Helen does. Yes, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, but I wanted to ask you about this idea of a book of lives. Mm -hmm. um, my feeling, well, my question is, does such a book really exist? Um, yes, such a book does actually exist. It's, uh, it's kept in record by some fairly high spirits who have kept it in record for such a long period of time. What they do is they notice every single conception that occurs on earth and because there is a linkage to the second part of the conception, the second person's conception on earth between the two halves of the soul, they can record who the soulmates are right at the time of the second person being conceived on earth. And, uh, and so what they do is they record the first half of the soul when the first half enters the person, on, uh, you know, the, the mother on earth. And then when they notice the cord where when the second incarnation occurs, the second half of the soul occurs, they write down the name of their soulmate as, as, a, as, a, as a product of, of their interest in the entire process. The reason why they began that process was because they were trying to discover the nature of the soul and at some point in time they realised that there were these cords, these energetic connections if you like, which are based around how God's created the soul made halves that, that are maintained between the two halves of the soul. And so, so what they started doing was recording each one so they could study it and that was, that was the beginning if you like of this book. Mm -hmm. And then as time's gone on, there's been other people very interested in stu studying this information. And so other people have joined this whole entourage of individuals who now keep a record of these books. And it's actually quite a large job that people maintain in the spirit world. Of course, God doesn't need it to be maintained. And we don't really need it to be maintained either. But it is a very interesting record in that uh, it contains a lot of information about the soulmates. It also contains a lot of information about what they've studied in mm. regard to soul, the soulmate uh, and how, it's, how, how the soul splits at the point of incarnation. And the record uh, is very interesting reading from the perspective of studying scientifically the process of the incarnation and, and 
and even now it includes the reincarnation of soulmates. So um, it's it's very interesting book that that any, anybody who is in the spirit world can ask about if they knew about it. Most people, of course, don't know about it, although they have heard the Bible statement about the Book of Life, and uh, and in fact, the Book of Life, the so-called Book of Life statement in the Bible came from these spirits, mm -hmm. who actually began this book, or, which is a record of the soulmates' incarnation and lives while they're on earth. So it's a detailed account of their life or just of their really it's, the soulmate? It's more of a scientific is. account of mm -hmm. what happened mm -hmm. rather than a detailed record of their life. As any spirit knows, a detailed record of each individual's life is recorded inside of the soul of each individual mm. and can be read at any time. So there is no need to keep a detailed written record of somebody's life. But, but there, it is more of a scientific uh, investigation into the lives of each of soulmate pairs. Of course, the investigation has now pretty much ceased in the process because uh, you know, it's been learnt over many, many millennia mm -hmm. of how soulmates incarnate and so forth. And so a lot of that information now has sort of, you know, the people who do the work now are not as interested in because it's a given, you know, it's an established fact in the spirit world about how soulmates incarnate. Uh -huh. mm. I wondered about um, John and his reference to the book. That would, having a book would enable a spirit who's not necessarily in a high condition of love be because those in a higher condition of love would be able to have more sense of the record within the soul of the individual. And also but in a higher condition of love, you can trace the uh -huh. connection from one half of the soul to the other anyway, so you don't need the book exactly. to actually see who the soulmate of the individual is. But someone like John, who's perhaps not in that same condition yet, no. then he, he's able to do the job by consulting the book. Exactly. Yes. Um, and the, this idea that God has a law which basically says that if you are in a relationship, a marriage, then I can't tell you who your soulmate is. Yes, it's, a, it's not really, and John wouldn't have known this at the time of even channeling the material, but um, it's not really a law about marriage. It's more a law about the heart of yes. the individual and how it's connected with loving a person. So God has basically made a law in the spirit world and on earth that if a person is in love with another person, then um, you wouldn't disclose to that individual if you knew who their soulmate was, mm -hmm. you wouldn't disclose to that individual who your soulmate was. Of course, um, Paget then, uh, John Paget then in, in felt that that was about being married to the person. But of course, from God's perspective, there is no such thing as marriage because the soulmate halves are married mm -hmm. to each other by this scientific process that God has created for the incarnation of the soul. So the reality is, whether soulmates think it or not, they are actually married to each other in, from God's point of view, as long as love flows. But there is this underlying respect for the flow of love between a person and another person. Mm -hmm. And this underlying respect for that flow means that uh, you know, God does not allow the disclosure of soulmate halves by higher spirits. Lower spirits will often disclose yeah. it, but higher spirits who, who respect the law will not disclose it. Well, and really I feel it's about the will. If, I've, if I'm using my will to give my heart to someone who may or may not who may not be my soulmate. Or maybe. Or maybe, yeah. Most, many don't know. Yeah. Mm. Then a higher spirit would be aware of the law of free will and wanting to respect my my will in that. Exactly. They would never try to alter my will. Exactly. But if my yeah. will was to know who my soulmate was, come what may, then, then of course they have a lot more reason to engage giving you the information or helping you become conscious of the information. It kind of has a lot of implications really for people here on earth, doesn't it? In that if it means from what you're just saying that if individuals had a sincere will, a sincere desire to know who their soulmate was, hmm. someone would be telling them. Exactly, and someone could find out quite rapidly. Yeah. The reality is very few people have a sincere desire because they're afraid of losing relationships or friendships or whatever. They're afraid of losing their livelihood, you know, their financial mm -hmm. livelihood and so forth. There's so many very uh, confusing things I feel in relationships today that muddy the waters of wanting to find out whether a person's your soulmate or not. 
And also some people feel they're, they're in love with the person that they're with and they don't want to know Sorry. whether the person they, they're with is their soulmate or not as a result of feeling that their love would be somehow confronted through that process. Yeah. And, you know, obviously God in the end wants all of us to understand and find out who our soulmate is because they are the perfect other half of ourselves. But, uh, you know, it does depend a lot upon our desires whether we ever will find mm. out. Mm. Okay, well, let's keep going. And even when you find out, as you know, it doesn't mean you're open to them. Like <laughs> James Paget knew who his soulmate was Helen, but he was still often closed to her. Exactly, mm. exactly. And ironically as well, I think that Sometimes we see people who we feel are probably soulmates. It's pretty obvious a lot of times. Yeah, and yet they're, they're afraid to know one way or the other. And a lot of them yeah. don't even clock each other when they walk into the same yeah, room. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so that, and that is an indication of how blocked they are towards each other and yeah. how blocked they are towards their own passions and desires and their own soul. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay, let's proceed. Mm. Um, so John's now saying to James... The reason is that I have that duty assigned to me. And as Helen has told you, I have taught her to perform this duty and she is now engaged in it and is most successful in the performance of her mission. <laughs> she seems to have a wonderful ability, or you might call it intuition, for locating the soulmates in the spirit world, as she never fails when she undertakes to find one. She also finds great happiness in doing this work and in seeing the happiness that comes to them who ask her to perform this task. I do not engage with it with so much enthusiasm as she does, but I do the best that I can and I am rewarded also by seeing the happiness of those soulmates when they are brought together. <laughs> Yeah. So that's really an illustration of what we've just been talking about. Isn't yeah, it? the, um, it, it's quite obvious that he was assigned the task in order to open him up to the concept of soulmates. And while it opened him up intellectually to the concept of soulmates, he still emotionally did not become open at this point in time to the concept. And later in the messages you see him starting to open up to the concept, mm. but um, at this point in time, he's still quite close to the concept of his own soulmate. Yeah. And, uh, and Helen, not having those limitations, can easily trace soulmates as a result. Because she, her heart's open, she's got this intuition, as he calls it. Yeah, and it also really follows just... the feelings that she can feel coming from one person towards another. Well, that's what I mean. It's mm. not really an intuition, it's that sense that she has, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. Um, so, do you want to read the next paragraph? Sure. No, not if they are not assigned to do this work. So the question Paget asked there was, are, is, is any, everyone. everyone assigned to do this? If, can anybody do this work or will every, you know... Does everyone do this work? Does everyone do this work? No, not if they are not assigned to do this work. This is one of the provisions of the spiritual world that each person has some work of a certain kind or several kinds to do and in that way are helped by the higher powers, or as we believe, the love of God to perform. A spirit who is assigned to do a particular work, such as helping the spirit when it first enters the spirit world, will not attempt to engage in other work of a wholly different kind. What John Paget didn't realise at this point was that many of the assignments that were made by higher spirits of these particular jobs are all to confront certain emotional blockages that the person has yeah. in performing a certain type of work. And so many of the assignments uh, are like that. So the assignment, if you receive an assignment in the spirit world of performing the work of, assi of, assi of looking for soulmates, there'll either be two di different emotions of, uh, usually present within you. One will be that you were totally blocked to your soulmate. Mm -hmm. And so they give you this assignment. Two is that you're totally open to your soulmate and you love the work. Yeah. And they give you that assignment because of the, the, the desire in you for the, for the work. And the same applies pretty much to every job that's assigned or every work that's assigned in the spirit world. It's either there to help confront something inside of the person emotionally or as a response to their passionate desire to do the work. Yeah, mm. yeah, lovely. Mm. Yes, as to attempting to awaken a spirit to a conception of the love of God that is waiting for it, all spirits may do this. And when a spirit succeeds in causing a darkened or blinded spirit to feel or realise that God's love is waiting for it, then the spirit who has caused that awakening is most happy. Mm. So the question Paget asked was, 
what about receiving the love of God? Can anybody teach about yeah. that? Yeah. And of course, everybody can. Yeah. 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 Um, if I continue, the next comment is interesting. Mm. Of course, it is only the spirit who has had that awakening himself who can cause or lead another spirit to that desire for spiritual enlightenment that will finally cause it to get this love to his full and complete happiness. I'm not yet in a condition to be fully able to do this with much success, but your grandmother and mother are very powerful in this particular, and they are the cause of many spirits becoming reconciled to God and his salvation. Mm. Which I find that very beautiful, just um, obviously that, you know, that spirits are doing this with success. Mm. But um, this idea that it's only the, the person who has actually really received a lot of God's love, mm. who's able to inspire this true desire in, in mm. other people. And it's, I feel very much the case here on earth as well. Very much so. It's it, an intellectual understanding of divine truth will almost result in nobody at all listening to a single word you say. And this is why many people who study the pageant messages on earth do not have much success in sharing them mm -hmm. because they actually only have an intellectual understanding of the messages themselves. If the person has a complete heart-based, soul-based understanding of the message and actually is applying it in their own life, then, then people will just be automatically attracted to them to listen to what they have to say. Hundreds of people, eventually thousands of people, will all be you know, listening to what has to be said because the person's light is shining to everyone. And the same applies in the spirit world. There are spirits who intellectually understand the divine truth and yet uh, have a very lot of, uh, much trouble uh, getting their own progression even to occur properly. But they also have a lot of difficulty in sharing the divine truth with others because they've yet to receive a lot of divine love themselves. And they are also yet to fully, fully understand from the soul level what it all means. Mm -hmm. And so they can only intellectually share. And this is one of the major reasons why the information from the pageant messages over the last hundred years hasn't taken much of a foothold on earth because most of the people who are reading it are only reading it from an intellectual perspective and they're not understanding the soul-based truths that are present in there or changing at the soul level. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, that they are incapable of sharing it with others or even generate, helping generate a desire in others to receive it from them. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's a, it's a very important point, I feel. And even for myself, mm. uh, you know, I reflect a lot on that. If, if I want to inspire others to know God, I have to know God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and if you want to inspire others to understand the truth, you've got to understand the truth. Yeah. And if you want to inspire others to develop their soul, you've got to have a developed soul. And if you want to inspire others to love, you've got to understand and feel love, yeah. not just talk about it. You need yeah. to feel it. Yeah. And people need to be able to feel it from you. Yeah. If you want to you know, inspire others in any direction, if you think about it, there needs to be a passion in your soul for that particular direction, not just an intellectual understanding of it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you see, the one great thing to obtain, either while on earth or after you come here, is the great awakening of and love of God in your own heart. It is of all things necessary the greatest. I know to a considerable degree what it means and the happiness that comes from it. But I am not satisfied and am striving to obtain more of this love and to rise higher in the kingdom of God. So you must try also, for you need not wait until you come over. Mm. So uh, that's very beautiful for me also, just mm. um, this encouragement that he receives from his father to keep um, desiring God's love and that of all things necessary, it is the greatest. Yeah, and I feel that's the main thing to keep in mind, isn't it? That it's the greatest thing. Mm. Mm. <coughs> just let me have a cough. Sure. <coughs> okay, do you want to continue now? She has it to a degree that almost enables her to go with your mother and I think that in a very short time she will leave us and rise to the higher sphere and we will miss her very much. So he's this now referring to Helen. Is Helen. It? Yep. Yes, he, Mr Riddle, is becoming more in a condition to receive this love and believe in what your mother tells him. She is the one that is trying to show him the way more than anyone else. 
He seems to have great confidence in her and her love. He is also progressing very fast and I expect that he will soon be with me in this sphere. So you see, we are all doing well in the way of progressing and your prayers help us very much. The major thing I noted from that paragraph was that he said, your prayers help us very much. Mm. And um, this idea that no matter what James's condition, his prayers assist other people that he pray for, that he prays for. Mm. Because when we when we pray for other people, we're expressing our love about them, and whether they are on earth or in the spirit world, they can feel the love that comes as the motivating force. Is the reason why we're praying for them. Mm -hmm. Now, when they can feel love coming from somebody, they of course are attracted to the person and and the love that's being expressed and it's the love that's being expressed that causes them then to feel quite attracted to being assisted through the process of growing and in addition the additional prayers that the person offers towards God causes more spirits to be involved in the helping of the person God because of our desires reassigns mm -hmm. different jobs to do or tasks to different people and, and so this is where how God responds to our desires. And even the way God's made all of her laws are all around about responding to desire. So, so even us having and expressing a prayerful desire for somebody to be assisted causes a, an automatic engagement of this law of desire, which, which then automatically engages the process of all of God's laws now working in harmony to provide more benefit to the individual we were praying for. Yeah. And the person we're praying for feels all of that at yeah. some point. Yeah. yeah. I feel that um, while prayer is discussed a lot on the earth, the true power of prayer is really not really not understood. Really understood. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. I have seen him, Taggart, very recently, and he is in the same condition as when I wrote you first about him. He does not seem to realise that he needs any assistance to help him to become happier or to progress to a better condition, and it is difficult to convince him. I tried several times, but he said that I was mistaken in what I told him and that he knew that he was just where it was intended that he should be, so I have not tried lately. Mm. How many people say that on earth, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I was reflecting on how arrogance is really the most difficult sin to assist someone with, isn't it? It is difficult, yes. When somebody is in a state of, oh, I'm fine, thank you very much. Uh, and even, even, if they're even in, when they're quite unhappy sometimes and they're saying to themselves, oh, but I'm where I'm meant to be. You know, like all, that, all those arguments, those intellectual arguments that people give themselves in order to avoid a whole heap of emotion. But also in order to avoid listening to a person who may be able to actually assist them. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, and... I, I enjoy this message very much because we're about to now start to hear from some of Paget's, James Paget's old friends mm, uh, mm. Um, and they're all lawyer types and yeah. <laughs> just their characters really shine through. It uh, does, yeah. yeah, it yeah. Does. Okay, uh, uh, I'll just finish this part mm -hmm. and hand over to you. No, I do not, but I can find him, Mackie, if you desire that I shall. He might want to say something to you, but only through me, as you must not get into rapport with these strangers to our band, for it will do harm and we must not run the risk. <laughs> so John's being a bit protective of his son. Yes. Worried that uh, the bad company will rub off on him in some way. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's obvious here that James is he's concerned for his friends and he's saying, well, well, no, come on, Dad. Like, let's talk to yeah, them. Yeah, I want to talk to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can <laughs> yeah. you find them for me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, you go ahead. We are here, Mr. Mackey and Mr. Taggart. They say that they are very glad that you have given them the opportunity to say a word. He, Mackey, says that he is much happier than when he first came over as he has commenced to see the things that are necessary to make him happier. He says that he wants you to tell him of your experience with some of the other spirits with whom you have come into contact. As he says, he has recently learned from earth sources that you have had considerable experience with spirits who have been in the condition of unrest and spiritual blindness and have helped them some. Mm. He says that he is in the earth plane, 
and that when he came over it was very dark and dreadful road that he travelled, and he was all blind and left alone after he first entered the spirit world, and that only recently has he commenced to see a ray of light, that his condition now is not one in which he, he receives much happiness, and he is not very hopeful of ever becoming very happy, as he sees nothing around him but darkness and depravity, and evil spirits who delight in trying to make everyone around them feel that there is no hope for any spirit, but that their lives must be spent in a condition of suffering and unhappiness. In other words, that they are in hell and have no hope of getting away from it. Mm. Mm. It's a very sad uh, story for many spirits because many of them, even if they're not Christian in their belief systems and not religious in their belief system, because they've heard the Christian and religious belief systems, when they pass into the spirit world in the place of darkness, they then assume that those belief systems are correct, even though they didn't believe them when they were on earth. And then as a result, um, they often have a, and surrounded by dark spirits who keep reminding them of these belief systems, telling them, you can't get out of here, you can't get out of here. Some of the dark spirits know that people can get out, but, uh, but want control of the individuals that are there. Others just don't know, don't believe, and also have no a desire to get out. But there are ones like him that do have a desire to get out, but keep f falling back into this same concept that maybe I'll never get out. Mm. Mm. And that was what struck me here, was the idea that without having any hope, that he was very stuck. Mm. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And as we read on, we'll see how Paget helps him with mm. that, but this idea that that when we don't have hope, we are very stuck, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So what if I read the rest of? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think it's Macu, isn't it? That's uh, what I'm reading. Yes. Yep. yep. He says that he has gotten some little light from a spirit who has been telling him that there is hope and a better place if he will only believe it to be so, and let his soul open up to the better influences but that he cannot believe that there is any God or Saviour or any better place for him. He says that if there is a better place or any reason to believe that there is a God or Saviour, he wants to know it. And if you can help him any, please, to please do so. He says that he has not seen Mr Riddle and does not know that he is in the spirit world. He says that he will try to find him and maybe he can get some help. So here Mackay, Mackay was basically saying that he had a spirit, a spirit who was on the natural love path come to him and, and tell him that there are better place and uh, let him soul open up to better influences. And Paget was saying to him, there is a God. Mm -hmm. There is, you know, and, and he's saying, well, I've never seen any God and I don't believe there's any God, but if there is a God, I'd like to try it out because, you know, yeah. I'd like to get into a better place than where I am at the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And this is why Paget then introduces him to Mr. Riddle, knowing that Mr. Riddle has already received divine love and can help mm. help him. And Mr. Riddle, being having a similar background, uh, would obviously be an ideal person to help to him help as well. Him. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you want to continue? Because I. He's now talking about uh, John Paget. He's, he says that I am much more beautiful than Mr. Taggart <laughs> and more happy looking. He further says that I am not so very different as he sees it to cause him to ask that question. But as you request it, he will do so. So the question that Paget wanted him to ask was, why are you more beautiful? <laughs> and of course, you know, and now he's going, oh, he is more beautiful, but he's not that much different. So I, I don't know why I should ask that question. Yeah. But he has asked me and I told him that my appearance and happiness was caused by my having gotten the love of God in my soul and the realisation that God is my father and loves me so very much that he wants me to be his child and become one in thought with him. So this, is now, this now gave John Paget the ability to explain to Mackey why he's in a more beautiful condition but it never occurred to Mackey to even ask him the question in the first place, <laughs> yeah. which is often the case with most spirits. It never occurs to them to ask sometimes the most obvious of questions. Yeah. Mm. Well, wouldn't you? It's not a unique condition really to spirits, is it? Often no. we wander around and don't ask people the most obvious, the of, most questions. obvious of questions. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
He says that may be true, but he does not understand it and that if it is the cause, he would like to know the way for he certainly wants to be rid of the awful darkness and despair that is with him almost continuously. So now he's hearing the truth about the divine truth and he's saying, well, he doesn't really understand, but he's willing to investigate it, of course. Because, as he says, that you are his friend and he will try to do as you suggested. But he says that he cannot yet believe that there is a God who can help him to get out of his awful condition. He says he will try to pray and try to believe and that there is, if there is anything in what you say and you really believe what you say, that you must pray for him also. <laughs> he says that for the sake of what you say, that if any of these spirits that you speak of should come to him, he will listen to them, even though he may not believe that he cannot promise to believe. Mm. So, so Padgett was trying to encourage him to listen to brighter spirits, listen to the, and he was saying to him, look, you know, I'll listen to them, but I can't promise you anything. Um, and that's a pretty good approach actually to take, I feel, from a person. He's an open hearted, he's mm. open enough. He's been, you know, harmed enough now by his knowledge of the hells of the spirit world to know that, um, and, and he now has this glimmer of hope that he might be able to get out of it. And he also has an openness to listening, which is something a lot of spirits and people on earth have no openness to doing whatsoever. Yeah, I feel he's actually displaying some humility already. already in that yeah. he's, he's being, and I really like how upfront Mackie is. Mm. And in later messages, he's very direct kind of a character. And I appreciate that about him. Because it means that he's saying, look, I'll cut with you, I'll, you know, I'll lay it out. I don't know if I believe in this God that you're talking about. And, mm. um, but that actually helps him. Mm, very much so. Yes, yeah. Yep. yeah. Gives him an uh, opportunity to experiment. And this is, uh, I suppose, the beginnings of that, the point of this, of this uh, message, isn't it? The, yes. The need to experiment. Um, and I feel there's something that's greatly missing on the planet. Everyone on the planet wants to know the truth but they're too frightened to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a big problem that we face on the planet. What we need to do is be willing to make mistakes and stop criticizing mistakes. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much criticism of mistakes. You know, you just have to make one single mistake and everybody's on you about it. You know, your parents yes. are on you from the beginning of your life almost about any mistake that you make. And that just continues throughout the rest of your life. And yet, you know, without the making of mistakes, you can never really discover new truth. Yeah. Mm. So, and it's also really, isn't it, risking failure, which yeah. we could call a mistake, I suppose. But this idea of experimenting with something and it not turning out, exactly. a lot of people have a lot of fear And it uh, requires true humility to risk failure. Um, yes. A person who is not willing to risk failure does not have humility. Well, you never really go for it, do you? That's right. Yeah. 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 And it's very important for people, I feel, on earth to understand that if they're not willing to risk failure, they don't have humility. Yeah. There is a certain degree of arrogance in them where they want everybody to believe they know everything or they, they don't want to be perceived as making a mistake. When making the mistakes can be the most beneficial thing to your entire life because it can help you change. Mm -hmm. And I feel that this is one of the big m mistakes many of us make. <laughs> yeah. is that, uh, and of course we're allowed to make that one as well. Yeah. But it's far better if we allow ourselves to make mistakes and investigate things rather than being condemnatory and judgmental about mm -hmm. mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. He says that he will come to you tonight and try to pray as you say, but he doubts it will do any good. <laughs> <laughs> but he does not think that it can do any harm. <laughs> he is willing to pray and will try to believe. You must not feel bad if when he does so, he tells you that he doesn't believe in prayer or God. And I like the way he says it, that he don't believe in prayer or God. Oh, he don't believe in yeah, yeah. Because actually that is the way um, Mackay in, in this particular state spoke. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like a, 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 a more that English sort of way of speaking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He says that he is not willing to run the risk of having his conscience lash him or his suffering any more than he is now. He does not believe he can do so and live. So that's showing us how desperate Mackie really is. He's in a really sad place and he can't risk not trying because he'll beat himself up about it and he might just continue suffering. So he's willing to try mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. which I suppose is a part of where the hells bring us to, isn't it? Yep. It's why they exist, to bring us to a point of humility where we will say, okay, it's not working. <laughs> and this is a great indication too that Mackie has stopped uh, trying to do more harm. Yeah. 
Yeah. So he, 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 even though he might have in his soul certain emotions that caused him to do harm, he's now stopped trying to harm others. Um, when a person first passes over in the spirit world, they often continue trying to harm others, which means that they have not reached this condition. Mm. But he's got to this point where he's saying, no, I can't run the risk of hurting anymore. Mm. I've, I'm not going to do anything that's going to harm me and anything that might potentially help me, I'll give it a go. Yeah. 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 He says that what you, say, what you say sounds as if there might be some truth in it and he will think about it. That is, if his happiness or future state depends upon his will, he will very soon determine that question. For if what you say is true, then he will be a big fool to remain where he is, when by the mere exercise of his will, he can get into places of happiness and light. So he says he will think of what you say. So here Paget was saying not to not encouraging him to exercise his mind because you know a lot of spirits do to encourage others to exercise their mind to get into a different you know to believe something different and it will be so it's not like that at all. In this case what Paget was doing and rightfully so was encouraging Mackey to to exercise his will his passion and desire his, his feelings in other words. Mm -hmm. So that, so that instead of just thinking something, he actually felt whether he wanted to do it or not. And, and he presented a very, as, as Paget often did, he presented a very clear argument about the use of will to Mackey. And as a result of that, Mackey goes, yeah, that's very interesting that you say that. That makes sense to me, makes logical sense to me. And so he uh, went ahead with the attempt. Yeah. yeah. And, and in this next paragraph, Paget lays it out for him what he needs to really attempt mm. and <clears throat> one of the reasons I've chosen this message as an early message that we discuss is because this great experiment really that he is outlining um, for his friend Mackie to try is the great experiment that we all must try mm. <laughs> and the beginning of relating to God so mm. he says that he can say what you have said and mean it and he is ready to do so now. If there be a God, and if that God has love for me and is ready to fill my soul with that love and make me happy and full of light, and whether I receive that love or not depends upon my will, then if this is all true, I will that God give me this love with all my strength and desire. Mm. And it was a, um, for anybody observing the um, situation, which we had the pleasure of observing, of course, um, in this moment, Mackie just had this strong desire when he, when he made the statement, I will that God give me this love. He, he had a very, it wasn't just a statement of his mind, but it was a very strong desire to connect to the emo emotion of that will. And as a result of that, he received some divine love. Mm. Mm. <coughs> he says that he is feeling some strong sensation now and that he will repeat this and pray to God and ask for faith and will continue to repeat it as you have taught him and he hopes that he may receive this love and light he says that you have shown him that there may be some such thing as this love of God and that he is willing to pray and, is, and if his receiving it depends upon his will, he is willing it with all his heart. He says that as you seem to have such faith in this love and in prayer, that you do not forget to pray for him. Mm. Mm. So it's another case I feel where Paget demonstrates his own faith in prayer and his own faith in love. And even though at times he lost faith himself about those particular things, throughout his life and even after he received the messages, um, his, his insistence and persistence in these fa facts helped the spirits around him so much. Yeah, yeah I feel that his service just shines through. He, mm. he is someone who's using his will in this a heartfelt way to, to assist people. He's demonstrating his faith and he's mm. persistent with them and he's very patient with his old friends. Um, yeah. yeah. And this idea of, um, I think that uh, Mackie saying, okay, I'm going to pray, I'm going to ask for faith, 
and I'm going to be willing to repeat it. That's something that we all need to do, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Yeah. And now Paget's sort of now thinking about Taggart. Yes. So, so Paget's going, okay, now McKay's got on the path yeah. to a degree, you yeah. know. Yeah. What's going on with Taggart? Yeah, mm. so take us to Taggart. <clears throat> So he asked his father, um, had Mr Taggart heard about what had just gone on? Yes, Mr Taggart has heard it all and he says that you certainly did put it up to Mackie to try the experiment, but that he is very doubtful if you will see any good results flow from it. <laughs> he says that, that he will wait and see what effect it has on Mackie and then he may be willing to consider the matter. So in other words, he's going to put off the decision and choice. He does not believe that prayer is anything more than a mere wish that emanates in and goes no higher than the mind and that consequently there is no God to answer for if there was the prayers of all the people of the warring nations would bring about such conflicting answers that confusion would be worse confused. <laughs> <laughs> Which he has a point there. Yeah well you know again this is some of his experience of life on earth I mean, you know telling him a certain what he believed is a certain truth that all these religions that are all praying for success in war you know, if all of them got answered, then God would be very one conflicting and, and very confused being. And <laughs> he would be totally confused as to why anybody would answer such prayers as well. So he had a very good point, of course. And, and, and also, um, he was also putting off, and a lot of people do this too, mm -hmm. they put off an experiment waiting for somebody else to do it for them. Yeah. And I noticed that happening all the time with people on earth as well, where they put off an experiment that they personally could conduct waiting for another person to conduct that experiment for them. And all it does is delay their own progress. Uh, it would be far better to conduct your own experiments as you feel the desire to do them without waiting for others, because then you have the benefit of whether knowing whether the experiment worked or not. Yeah. And I feel that's one thing that we all need to do, to be willing to make mistakes ourselves rather than wait for the other person to make a mistake and then laugh at them or, or wait for the other person to make a mistake and go, yeah, I avoided a mistake, you know. That's the only yeah. reason why we would do such a thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. He says that he never thought of it that way. So what happened now was that uh, Paget was explaining to him that he's putting, well, just what I basically just yeah. said, that he's putting off his own progression and it makes no logical sense for him to do such a thing if he's already noticed that, Tag that Mac Mackie had some kind of result from the prayer that he, mm -hmm. he gave. And so, you know, this was a very convincing argument and again, logical. And so he says that he never thought of it that way. But if, as you say, the prayer should be that this love, which you say should make men love not only God, but one another and make every man strive to make happy every other man, then if that prayer should be answered, the war would soon stop. Mm -hmm. And the nations as nations and as individuals would undoubtedly be happy and peace would reign all over the land. So, so Paget's argument was basically that um, if, they prayed for the right thing. If they prayed for something based around love, then of course those prayers could be answered. And if those prayers were answered, then the result would be fantastic, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, at this time, the war had just begun, yes. uh, you know, not long, a few months earlier. And, and so, um, you know, it was something that was on the minds of everyone, even in the spirit world, in the lower spheres. And he says, and if this is the love that you were trying to tell us about, then I'm not so certain that it is worth striving for. So why does he say that I'm not so certain that it is, it is worth Well, I think for. that's a misprint, actually. Yeah, he's I, saying that, that, it I, isn't that worth. I, I'm feeling that he's, you know, from my recollection of it, that he's saying that I'm certain that it is worth striving for. Mm -hmm. And then Paget did a bit more reasoning with him, of course. And then he says, you are a very ingenious re reasoner. And I commence to see that there may be some logic in what you say. Mm -hmm. But how am I to, att to attempt to do that in which I have no faith? Yeah. I know that I ordinarily, when on earth, required everything to be proved. And unless things were proved, I was not willing to accept conclusions. And I have not changed in that particular since I've come to the spirit world. And I find it hard to change. But, as you say, I should be reasonable enough to let my mind be open to a conviction, if such conviction can possibly be brought about by any means, whether they arise from the knowledge that I gained when I was on earth, or whether they arise from things connected with this spiritual world of which I have very little knowledge. <laughs> and I, I like here as well that um, we're starting to see how... Um, Taggart is actually displaying a lot of the blocks that most people have towards God 
I need proof. What what happens on the world? You know, if, if the the errors in in religious doctrine. The errors in religious doctrine being sort of sort of brought to the mind of the person and then, then person then using that as proof that such a thing doesn't exist. That doesn't exist, yeah. yeah. Which is not a very logical thing to do, but but it is what people do. Yeah. Mm. And he's also beginning now to... Uh, and also Paget's using logic with him, mm. which is, is something that many people feel is foreign to a relationship with God. And uh, Paget's appealing to this logical side in mm. his friends, and it's, it's beginning to help him develop humility. He's saying, OK, all right, maybe my convictions can be... Um, found from another source other than just my mind. Maybe I'm going to have to do something to in order to get yeah. to gain conviction. And and Paget, being a lawyer, having a lawyer background, was quite a good reasoner by this stage in his life. He was quite is quite late in his life now. You know, he's, and, and so he, he's quite a good reasoner with people. He easily sees the mistakes in a certain logic, you know, logical train of thought, and so he can see the mistake in the train of thought that that um, Taggart in this case is displaying. And so he's willing to confront the illogical statements mm -hmm. that are being made. And that, that, the confrontation of illogical statements is the opening in many cases to a person's heart felt desires. And this is something that, that I try to do constantly in, yeah. in our presentations is to constantly confront people's illogical behaviour and statements because without the confrontation of, Ill of illogical behaviour, a person is going to continue to think that they're Assumptions are logical when they are not. Mm. 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 Okay. So after all, I guess Mackie is not such a big fool to try the experiment. <laughs> and having confidence in you as a friend that has at, has at, my, at heart my welfare, I will do the same as Mackie has promised to do. So you can pray for me too, and I will pray also. But of course, I will not be able to have any belief that my prayers will be answered. So you see, I'm not only hard headed, but hard hearted also. <laughs> and and that is that's the truth, isn't it? He's really coming towards the truth that, wow, my heart is hard to this this subject, yeah. which is him also developing more humility. Definitely. Having yeah, a realization he's, he's having of his having some acknowledgments of his true condition and how blocked he is to receiving even intellectual knowledge, yeah. having to be reasoned through a logical train of thought by Paget in order to come to even a, an awareness or an intellectual awareness that a mm -hmm. possibility might be true. And then on top of that, his own unwillingness to go, yeah, but I don't really believe it anyway, you like that, that feeling. And, and then for him to see, yeah, that's another feeling, you know, that's yeah. a feeling that I'm having where I'm hard in my heart, you know, I'm not, I'm not willing to try something that my head, uh, you know, hasn't been convinced firmly about. And even then, even when you convince him firmly, he's still not willing to necessarily try it. So. But we see again the power of having a person who loves him he can feel Paget's love for him yep. and the power of that has to help a person change. And Paget isn't un angry with him or impatient with him or frustrated with him. Paget is willing to re-engage the discussion over and over again. And even you can see before the next paragraph, Paget's obviously saying a bit more to him now, yeah. you know, to try to help him convince, be convinced to go ahead with the experiment. And and this is what a person who loves you does. They don't. They, they don't give up easily on you. Yeah. You know, they, they don't just go, oh, fair enough, and walk away. They want to engage you, particularly when the, the response they're getting back from you is not angry or resistive, but rather just as a logical discussion. Mm -hmm. Then why would they not stay in the discussion? Yeah. And we see this happen a lot uh, on Earth where people enter logical discussions and then because somebody's logic is confronted, and in other words, they have a lack of logic, they then become emotionally engaged in the discussion. They then start personally attacking other people. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you do that, you can't now stay in the discussion. This, you know, Taggart didn't do this with Paget. He, he wasn't offended mm -hmm. by, by his comments or anything like that, but, but he engaged Paget continu continually. And, while, and Paget could feel, while he's willing to engage me, I'm willing to share with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes, I am. If it depends on my will, I am more than willing. <laughs> Not only that, but if there be a God and the love that you speak of, 
I will forever thank that God for taking me away from this condition of blindness and unhappiness. So here Paget reminded him that he was in darkness and he was unhappy and that this was an opportunity for him to maybe get out of the happiness, uh, unhappy state and into a happier state. And wouldn't it be worth using your will to do that if, if such an opportunity was available to you? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I'm willing to pray to God to help me to believe. And if that will bring relief, then there will be no difficulty, for I will make such a prayer with all my heart. Mm. So now he's, he's open. He, a moment ago, he was, yes, I'm hard-hearted. And, and even in that realisation, he's now softening his heart. Mm. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Yeah. And also willing to see that once he can feel the relief in his soul, he, he can see the relationship between that and having more faith. Yeah. There's all, automatically this growing idea or concept within him, within him that if he tries the experiment and the experiment actually works... Then, then that would prove to him that there is a potential of being relieved from his own unhappiness and that would cause him to engage more. And there's even an intellectual acknowledgement with him that that's the case. Mm. So, so there's this willingness to even experiment further logically with, with Paget's argument. Mm. Mm. And often on Earth, we lose sight of how our experiments have actually benefited us, don't we? Benefited yeah. us. Without experiments, we would have learnt nothing on Earth. Yeah. You know, yeah. Scientifically, we would have learnt nothing. Yes. Yeah. You know. And so, without w being willing to engage in an experiment, we're, we're never With going. With the potential to... of making a mistake or not having an outcome. Yeah. yeah. Of f feeling foolish or worrying that we'll look foolish, mm -hmm. uh, we can't actually grow beyond a, quite a limited scope of our life well we can't grow beyond what the average person on the planet believes is the average thing to believe mm -hmm. we can't grow beyond what is normal what what, what everyone considers to be normal yeah. uh, so so at the moment you could say on the earth everyone basically considers normalcy to be you know war uh, disharmony in families you know disharmony in between nations um, constant bickering and fighting, legal matters, all these poverty. things. Poverty. Yeah, poverty. All these things are treated as normal. Mm. And, and the reality is we're not ever going to have anything beyond that if we have the viewpoint that, that what is normal can only be the only thing that can be accepted. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You are the most persistent man that I have ever met in these spiritual matters. And if what you say happens, I will certainly thank you with all my heart and soul, for I can conceive of nothing more desirable than to have the great blessings and possessions that you tell me about. So I will keep faith with you, as I said. When next you give me the opportunity to write, I will frankly tell you what the result of my experiment is. Yeah, so here Paget was even explaining to him the you know the spheres of the spirit world the beauty that lays beyond his current condition all of these other things you know who trying to give him some encouragement and and of course this then piqued Taggart's feeling of oh if that's possible and because you know Paget spoke with such conviction he believed it was possible you yeah. know that he even conceived that it might be possible because his friend had such conviction about it and as a result of that, he was willing to try the experiment yeah. even more. Yeah. So Patrick was pretty persistent with him and, and, and pretty persuasive. Yeah, and reading this message, I was quite emotionally touched at how much regard Paget has for his friends. He's, mm. he's mm. persistent. He's saying to them, keep the faith with me. I'm here with you, with my heart, you know. we can." Yeah. And if you don't believe in a God, at least believe that I love you and I'm, it, I'm your friend, you know. And, yeah, and uh, just try it out, mate. You know, you can feel this, this uh, just by in the way that they respond to him. Yes. Uh, it's evident how much of his heart is going into this work that he's doing. And, and they don't feel attacked by him. They don't feel criticised or judged or, yeah. by him. And yeah. this is what you find a lot of people who are religious, who have a certain religious thought, they share their religion with another person, but they're constantly judgmental and attacking and belittling and pulling down and condescending. And it's, it's very difficult for anybody to hear the words they're speaking while all of these emotions are present. Absolutely. And even when... Um, 
I think it was Mackie, um, he was encouraging Mackie to ask him, why does John, my father, look brighter? Now he could have done that in a really condescending way, like why haven't you even asked, you haven't even asked why it's like this, but he didn't. He said, just get him to ask you what this is about mm. and help, help him to, he's really helping to inspire desire in them, isn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah. Without judgment, yeah. without condescension. Yeah. And I feel this is a very key part of, of helping any person. If you, you're going to be judgmental and condescending, then it's very, very difficult for anybody to grow as a result of what mm. you do or say. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes, and I appreciate what you have done. And I say to you that this violation of your law, which the band you speak of has prescribed, has caused me to think more deeply of your interest in me and what you said than I can express. So that you basically here said, look, I love you so much that I'm willing to to forgo my own condition to, to a degree, and that's not really the case, but that's, you know, that that uh, was the general inclination of his band and, and if, what they felt. if we explain this, this band that Paget had were a group of people that he, mostly that he'd known on earth who were in a higher condition, um, who came... Who were basically protective. Yes. Protecting, and protecting him from negative spirit influences. They didn't want him to be talking to just anyone. They no. wanted it to, them to sort of be the gatekeepers and to, yeah. to help him get in rapport with them because they wanted to transmit higher messages. Yeah, yeah. and Paget often felt like, no, I want to also <laughs> speak to my friends as well. And that was a beautiful part of his nature and, and also uh, an expression of his love, yeah. which is the reason why he had so much success with it. it exactly. Mm. And it also shows, earlier we talked about how um, it's hard to inspire people towards God if you haven't actually moved towards God yourself. And so Paget is demonstrating mm. that he has made these shifts. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So goodbye for the present. The next time I come, I will try to observe your law and write through your father if he will permit me. Permit me to. Yes, you certainly did give the gentleman a struggle to get away from what you're... Now we're back to John here. Yes, that's day. correct. Yes, you certainly did give the gentleman a struggle to get away from what you said to them. And I believe that you have impressed them to such a degree that will, that will be lead to... That, that they will be led to learn the truth. You are tired and must stop. Your father, John H. Paget. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Very good message. Huh? It's a lovely message. Yeah. So yeah. that that was written in the. It can be downloaded on the website. It can be uh, read in the True Gospel Volume Three, page thirteen. Or. It can be written read in the page messages. Page eighty-one of this version of the messages, transforming the soul, divine love. Which are individual uh, volumes that are done by Joseph Babinski. By, and, by year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and there are many other ways that you can access that information as well. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, babe. Okay.